All right, everyone. So um, what we've got, if you notice the um, syllabus, we've actually, we're working pretty, pretty well ahead of schedule. Uh, remember that I sent everyone a, um, uh, if you sent me an email, I sent you the, the page two of the syllabus. And uh, on week three, I've got some things to talk about it. Actually, we started already to talk about them previously. So uh, either you guys are le learning it really well or I'm going too fast. But um, <clears throat> but the, uh, the things that we're going to talk about this week are, well, persistent navigation. We've already been talking about it. Transitions, we've been talking about it. We'll talk about linking to external pages today, definitely. And the page widgets, we've been working with those as well. So again, and let me just, uh, I'm interested uh, to get sort of a sense of things. Uh, just a quick poll of things. How many of you would you say that maybe we're going a little too fast? Raise your hand. Uh, a couple of you. Okay, how many of you are saying think maybe we're going on the right speed? Okay, how many of you would you say are, are we going too slow? A couple. Okay, so most people are saying in the middle. So uh, we'll pretty much keep at the at the same pace here. Uh, so there's still several things to talk about. So you want to open your index file in notepad and it's been a long time since you looked at it perhaps so we will then preview in the web browser this is where we're at so far uh, overall we have the different pages starting to put some content Uh, so, uh, we need to talk then about linking to external content because everything that we've got so far exists in one page. The home screen, the art screen, computers, everything exists in one index HTML file. And sometimes we need to go out of that, out of, a, out of our one HTML file to other content and it needs a little bit of a little bit of a tweak in order for that to work. So what we're what we'll do is we'll um, make a link somewhere in our document so that it goes out to an external website over to an external source, and then we need to deal with that because we're breaking out of the world of this one document. So I'm going to say that in my art screen after the sections of these classes, I want a link uh, to the college's uh, catalog. Now we'll be able to do a better version of this when we get to the part where it's an actual app. Right now it'll, it'll be a link like any old website, but it needs a, a little setup. So uh, we'll go over to the art classes section in our code, and after that collapsible widget, we're going to add a link. So we need to find that first, and again, if we use the find feature, control F, uh, I think I can find quickly where I need to be at if I, if I control F for art 103. I know that really only one place in my document I have that, and that should jump me all the way down to the right line number. So if you find it, what line number is art 103 at? In my case, in my case, it's 127. So that took me to the place uh, approximately where I need to be. Uh, line 127 is that um, divider within the collapsible, and the whole collapsible element ends on line 133. And then 134 ends the content of the page of art classes, and then 135 begins the footer. So if you haven't been making any uh, comments and such, it's a good idea to do so. Uh, we'll make some together once in a while. Uh, but we need to be around the area here. Uh, when you first start off with working with code, it might just look like it's a big bunch of a wall of code. But as you start to work with it, especially with the with the sort of repetitive nature sometimes of jQuery Mobile, we'll see, OK, I see a footer section. I just need to orient myself what footer of what page. 
since I'm sort of near another section here, ID computers, okay, then I might figure out that I'm in the at the end of the art page. So actually it would be a good idea for me to write a, a, a comment at about line 140 there to mark that as that's the end of my content page, if you haven't done so yet. So on line 140, I'm going to add the comment code. Remember, this is the one that's uh, angle bracket, exclamation, dash, dash, space, dash, dash, greater than. And then whatever we put within those tags there is the comment. So make yourself a comment, end of the art screen. However you, you want to write it. Maybe you could write art screen end. Because when you're browsing this code, it's uh, very easy to get disoriented. And any time that you use comments, it should help orient you. All right, so I want to make a link. We we saw previously about making a link and then uh, making it a um, activating it as a button and such. So we'll do something similar. Uh, I want a new button after the collapsible element, which ends on one line one thirty three. Again, this is a spot where you could put a comment. On line one thirty three, I could write. Collapsible ends. Collapsible end. And then on the next line, uh, this is going to be a link over to the college's um, catalog. So we'll say um, we can write SDCE catalog. Right after, right after that div, and what we can do is then put an A tag around it so that it becomes a link. So we'll have a link here, and we'll do a bunch of things to it so that it actually is active and so that it has uh, styling. So href, and in a moment we'll go over to get the address live from the site. But let's set up that line. It's an href, it's a tag, uh, an anchor tag. We've done that before. And I'll go, let's go over to the web browser and we'll go to sdce.edu. I want to link directly to the catalog and I don't have it memorized so I'm going to go get it from the website. So let's go to sdce.edu on your web browser and then click the take a class button at the top right. Okay, that's the link that I want. So again, just click on the Take a Class button, and then you need to copy the link that the web browser gives us. And that's our link that is at the, the href. So back in my code, I'm going to paste there. That's the address. Again, uh, that's the address. I got it from the web browser. If we were to save and run this and see the result, well, it's a plain old you know, web 1.0 type of link. There'll be some text, it'll be underlined, it'll look like uh, old school. So we will have to then add a data role to it so that it be so that it looks like a button. So after your href data dash role, 
equals button. And now that plain old link has become a button. When it goes over to the other screen, we will. But once we once we get to the part about uh, actually making an Android app, then we'll take advantage of the in-app browser that gives us that control. Right now, it's still behaving like a plain old link. You know, we have other things we could do. We could put it in a in an iframe and that sort of thing. But for the moment, uh, we're building up to something that eventually will be better. Data roll button. I'll say data dash icon. Anyone remember any interesting icon that we haven't used yet, perhaps? Gear. Gear. What okay, picture? Sure. Gear. Or list. List. That might work. It's like it's like bullet points. Yeah, list. Is it? I, there's list, and I think there's bullets, or one of those. We'll see. But we'll try list. Data icon list. So now we can save and run that, and we can see um, what it looks like. Yeah, it might not be a list. I think it's bullets. Yeah, it's bullets. So if we add a data icon of bullets, we get a nice little thing that looks like a bullet list. That reminds me of a, a list of classes. And my result then is a button, SDCE catalog. And if we click it now, a couple of things may happen. Depending on your web browser, I'm in Firefox, and it seemed to have worked. Uh, if you test it in other browsers, it may or may not work. Uh, because what we've got here, this is, this is a plain old link that's been around a long time. But we're using it in a different... Um, environment, so to speak. We're doing uh, jQuery mobile with it. And this is, this wants to take us out of our cozy world of our index HTML file. So it would behoove us to add one little bit of code here to make sure this works all, at, at all times. This may work on some browsers as is, it may not work on other browsers. So to cover all bases, I would say we do this. After our data icon, next we'll add something new. This is rel equals something. It's not data rel. We have seen data rel before. Data rel was when we had a dialog, a pop-up box. But data rel, anything that's preceded by data usually only makes sense if we've got jQuery mobile. What we're doing here is we're not really technically dealing with jQuery mobile. It's just that jQuery mobile uh, appropriated this old-school um, attribute, this rel, and what we need to say here is external. The relationship between what I'm about to click on and where it's going is that it's an external uh, resource. So if you save it and run it and you get the exact same result as before, good. If previously the link was not working, now it should work. And from my testing, uh, I do see that some browsers older versions of the browsers or alternate versions, sometimes without a rel, the link never goes anywhere. Even though you double check and triple check your spelling and your link and everything, it's because we, we didn't explicitly say, let's get out of the world of the index and go into the regular internet. rel external. I'm going to save and run that. That seems to work. All right, did that uh, work for everyone? Did you get your link to go to an external source? So there's a few things I want to do here also. Question? Um, how do you make it open in your window? 
Yeah, okay, we can do that. That's a good point. Um, I'm still thinking about it that eventually it's going to be an app, but that's a good point. Oh, okay. we're, st we're, still, uh, we're still a website at the moment. Mm -hmm. So let's make it actually open in a new window. Remember that? I think we talked about it briefly that yeah. if we go to someone else's website, we should uh, open it in a new browser window. That's what we'll do now. So here's what we're missing. After rel external, we will add target equals underscore blank. So we've said we're going to an external source and then uh, the target of that should open in a blank, a new blank window or tab. Once we get to the point that it's an app, we will remove that, but we'll, we'll get to that. So this uh, should work great for a, a web site, a little web app. Now I want to venture a little bit into um, styling things, changing the look of things, but does this work for everyone? So the, what happened was when you click that, then it opened in a new tab, I close that tab, I'm back on this site. What I want to do is, okay, it's a button, it works, but it looks a little too much like the collapsible element above it in that it goes all the way across the screen just like the other one and there's some, some very subtle shadows around this one that makes it different from that but not different enough. So I want to do a few things. I, I, don't, I don't want the button to, to look as big as it currently looks uh, and also uh, because it's going to be smaller I want it centered on my screen. So some things like centered and left aligned and right aligned sometimes they're not as straightforward to accomplish as you would think especially when we're up to this level of jQuery mobile that we use a lot of CSS that's built in that we have to override. So I want to make this button not so big and what we can do is add uh, another data attribute. Um, doesn't, matter, doesn't matter where we add it but just aesthetically I'm going to add it uh, after data role, after data icon, we'll put it right there before rel, before target. These two are non-jQuery mobile attributes, and these are. So just aesthetically, I don't think it's going to cause any difference. I'm going to put it right there so that it follows those. We could probably put it here as well and nothing adverse will happen, but you know, good code is sometimes beautiful code. So what we want to write here is data-inline equals true. We saw this one also before. This one um, forces an element to instead of take up all of the space horizontally to only take up the space that it needs. So data inline true should give us this result that the button no longer extends all the way across. Now, there's a couple of ways that we can handle this. Um, um, well, there's many ways that we can handle to, to center this. Uh, we'll see which of these gives us the best result. And this is going to be with some CSS. Uh, so I want to... I want to center that on the screen. And back when we were um, back when we were uh, the first week when we made the very basic website, we used the property of a text align center. I want to give that a try, but we might need a little bit of setup. Question. I have a general question. How do you know whether if we just did use inline code or use CSS for that? This is not CSS. So you can still. That box CSS, right? You could. You could also control it a, a bit more with CSS. Uh, if you need the some exact values or percentage-based values, then we could use CSS. That way we can say it's exactly 200 pixels, or it's going to be relatively 25%. So that's one, one reason why we might use CSS to shrink it. 
but I know that there's a built-in data inline attribute which will automatically shrink it small enough to fit what's inside of it. And I know that because, you know, the, the documentation of jQuery mobile. So I want to uh, I want to center this button, and uh, I think the way we'll give this a try, we, we might have some trial and error sometimes, but that's uh, sometimes the way this stuff works, especially with CSS. I want to center my document. So uh, I'm first, I'm going to put a div. I suppose you could just simply put a paragraph, uh, but I, I want to do this with a div. Uh, we'll give it a class, and then with some CSS, we'll center the contents of the div. Let's see how that goes. So uh, let's go back to our code here and let's wrap a div tag. You mean have a div but then add the centering? Yeah, that, that could work, but I want to... I usually want to focus on writing code that is generic enough that I can reuse because if I I can do the inline styling right here but then it'll only apply to this button and if I need to recenter something else anywhere in my document I'd have to write the exact same code double the code so if instead I set up the way that I'm gonna give it a try here I think then we'll be able to reuse our CSS class multiple times with less code Um, so here I'm going to uh, write div, and then we'll say class equals something. Um, so when we've got um, ID or class that is actually not jQuery mobile specific, that comes from the invention of basically of CSS uh, years before jQuery mobile. So an ID is something that is um, usable only once per document. Only one thing in my whole document, all five screens of my site, uh, there's only one thing called computer, this section. But class is something that I can reuse multiple times per screen, per document. So I'm doing it this way because then we'll create some CSS that if this works, then we can apply this centering uh, CSS to just about anything in our document. Uh, so here we'll say... Um, We'll give this a name. Uh, we can call this. Um, what's that? Center sure, but what if we're centering something else that's not a button? So I, I'm going to call it div center. This is generic enough uh, so that anything that I'm going to center, I, I could I could use this for. And these names could be anything. It could be kitty cat, and it'll work. But then when, we looking, when we're looking at our code and like, what, what does KiCat do again? This uh, div center, at a glance, I can kind of think, okay, I made this because I want to center a div. So call this div, div center. And notice I did a capital C right there. That's optional. Uh, you, this could have been called <clears throat> div center with a lowercase. That would have been fine. It could have also been fine if I did div underscore center would have been fine. div underscore capital C for center. That's fine too. What's not fine is a space, even if it's lowercase. Don't put a space. That means something completely different. So I'm going to go with div capital C. This is half of the puzzle. This is... Um, I've got an element on the screen that I wish to control. I've set that up. Now I'm going to go over to my CSS file and in my CSS file write exactly how I'll control it. So here in Notepad you want to um, open up the codica.extra.css. That's where our, all of our extra CSS is saved at. This will be extra. It's not built in. I'm changing the default behavior of things. So let's uh, edit our Kodika EXT CSS file. Be careful because there's also one that is a JS file, not that one, the CSS file. Open the CSS file in Notepad. You should see some code that's already there. Uh, 
after the code that we've got existing, uh, we need to then say dot. That is basically shorthand for class. So I'm saying I'm about to write some code that will affect a class, the class we just made, div center space, curly brace, enter a couple of times, close curly brace. So we'll get a little more practice with CSS, which we started last time. All of these three uh, selectors uh, are, um, are ones that we invented. There's no tag built into HTML or CSS called wide image. We invented it. There's no tag called square image. We invented it. Div center. We're inventing it. Um, and because it's a class, we can reuse it throughout our document. Now, usually what I do when I start to work with CSS, especially to try to change something that already exists, what I usually do, just to make sure I'm, I, I'm on the right track, is um, I just put a background color and then check my results. And if I see my background color, I think I'm on the right track because I'm controlling the thing that I expect. Because everything in our document, everything in our document always actually has an empty or has an invisible box around it until we change it. So I'm going to put in here, let's say, a background dash color. I just choose any color that comes to mind. Pink. Because you can type, type it with one hand. Did you know that? <laughs> you can also type erase with one hand. Little trivia there. Does anyone know what the longest word in English that you can write with one hand is? Stewardesses. Stewardesses. With one hand. Magic. Anyway, pink. You can write it with one hand. That's the first thing that comes to mind. So if you save your CSS file and run your HTML file, I hope to see the color pink behind the button. Exactly like that. This is just um, sort of like, you know, when, when um, you ever see those movies or shows where the crime scene happens and it looks normal but then they shine the black light on it and they see everything. This is sort of my way of doing that where I'm trying to see what what am I dealing with? Is there a box there? What's there? How big is it? Because sometimes I'm working with CSS, it's not doing what I want. I put a background color, I shine the black light on it and I see, oh, I was dealing with the wrong element. So if you're able to see this background color, it seems that we're on the right track. So there's a div, it's taking up the whole width of our document. Uh, there's the button inside of it. I'm going to give this a try next. Text align center. text dash align colon center. And so we should be seeing that whenever any CSS uh, property here needs uh, more than one word, they separate it with a dash. Text dash align center. Save it. And remember, run the index, not the CSS file, or you'd get a screen full of code. And what you should see is it hopefully centered your button. Is that a side effect of us using the, uh, the, uh, the data inline? <clears throat> uh, yes, because without data inline true, it would want to take up as much space as possible, so there really is no center if it's going really from end to end, once we've got right. data inline. But if you, if, 
let's say if it was a block, you might be able to change the width or something like that. And then you'd have to start playing with margins to, uh, to center it. Yeah, I might do that margin auto trick. Mm -hmm. If if this one didn't work, that would have been a fallback. Sort of a display in line type of behavior. Yes, because we are we're controlling what's inside of the div. So um, anything that is in the div, in, which is which might not be text, gets text aligned. All right? Did that work for everyone? And anyone need some help? Did you get a, a centered button on a field of pink? So there's always a, there's always a box. It's invisible until you make it visible, and that's what I usually do when I'm trying to figure out some CSS trick. I usually put a background color, and then if that works, if I see the background color, then I can proceed. Mm -hmm. I do the same thing, but with a, usually with a border. Um, yeah, oh, okay. For a red box, right? Yeah. It does shift things around a little bit because of the thickness of the border. Yeah. That's a little bit deeper. Exactly. All right, so works for everyone. Anyone need some help? All right, so uh, that background color, I don't need it anymore. So uh, you can remove it or you can comment it out. Did I talk about comments in CSS in this class? Okay, just to remind you that to comment, this is different. You're not going to use the exclamation point type of comment. You're going to use slash, asterisk, and that starts the comment until you end it. So notice everything turns green, that deactivated everything. You want to go to the end of the line and then the opposite, which is asterisk star. And that's comment, end comment, the code is deactivated. I may need it later. I don't want to retype it. I can remove it. Or if I want to save a few bytes, I can remove it. And the result should look like that, that our button now is centered uh, on the page, on the screen, uh, and it's inline, so it only takes up the amount of space that it needs. Yes? So, when you change the background color from the thing around the button, mm -hmm. but it didn't change the background from the button. Exactly. We, we didn't specify enough. Um, when we get to using jQuery Mobile, we've got things inside of things inside of things, uh, which we'll get to soon about trying to edit some of that. What we did was we edited the container. It's like we changed the sheet of paper that this stuff is, is on top of. Uh, if I want to change the cell here, I have to target that cell and say this, make it red and then we can change it. So we'll, we'll see about changing these, these, these widget, these component colors soon, but it takes, takes a little more effort. Is that because our class is in the div, so all our CSS Sort of relates to the div, which is the whole the whole box. If we wanted to change the color of or do something to the button, we would do that in the anchor tag. That's Pretty much, and uh, I'll actually try it. So watch this uh, to the a tag. I'll add a class to that as well, the exact same class div center, because it's a class I can reuse it. Let's see what happens. I need to turn the pink back on. So, yes and no. We would be applying the class to the button, for example, but again, because at the point of jQuery Mobile, there's things inside of things, this is not specific enough. Uh, so it doesn't, it doesn't uh, obey. But we can reuse that class div center in a variety of places. It just doesn't quite work here.
All right, so let's say we are going to Let's say we're going to start to deal a little bit with uh, styling our project so that it doesn't look so boring anymore. Maybe I do want to change these buttons and background colors and such. Uh, let's shift gears into that. This will be more CSS. I, I'm tired of the gray, simple colors, and those blue colors. I want to use the colors of my organization. So now let's deal with that. This is going to open a big old can of worms, but that's uh, it's a good day to spend on it. So. Um, Let's uh, go ahead and load up the index file in, in the web browser and then expand your window completely uh, like that. And then we're going to use a tool that's built in to our current version of uh, Firefox. And there's a tool that's also built into Chrome and Opera and, uh, and Internet Explorer, Safari. All of the web browsers have this. It used to be that you would have to get a little third-party plugin to do what we're going to do. Anyone uh, ever heard of something called Firebug? Okay, so Firebug is a tool that we would add on to Firefox to allow us to do more web development. It's still around. I think it still has its uses and such. But for us, the, the modern web browsers now have a version built in. And here's how we access it. Let's go back to the, the home screen here. And then on, um, on your welcome, on your welcome text there, right-click on it, and at the bottom you should see Inspect Element. Select Inspect Element, and you get this brand new screen at the bottom that basically shows you code, the code that we've written, and many more things. This inspector down here is so useful for a variety of things, for web development, if you're doing apps that are HTML based, it's also really useful here. It's built into Firefox. If your favorite web browser is Chrome, it's got one of those. If you use Internet Explorer, the latest versions, 11 and 10, they have a good one too. 11 is a better one. But the point of this is this can help us break down the invisible things that we don't see uh, here in our, in our index. For example, uh, data theme A. Okay, we, we've seen that. We can change it A or B, but I want my own colors in the footer or my own colors in the background. And basically many of these things you can think of them as shorthand. Data theme gets translated or gets processed by jQuery mobile to actually mean background color gray, border radius 12, padding 7. That one little word gets translated into like 10 or 20 or 40 lines of code via jQuery mobile. So there's a lot that we don't see. The element inspector, however, will let us see it. If you right click your welcome and this opened up, there's a strip right here very important to pay attention to. Right? There's a divider with some menu items here we'll look at later. But below it, there should be this sort of hierarchy. And I would recommend to read it from right to left. Right is specific, and to the left is general. I clicked, I right-clicked on welcome, and it told me you selected the H2, which is inside of a div of UI-content. We never wrote any div of UI content. Well, that's built into jQuery mobile. That's inside of a div. We're on the home screen. That's familiar. But then that's got UI-page, UI-page theme A, etc. And that's inside of the body. That's familiar. I know there's a body tag there. But then that has UI mobile, viewport, UI overlay, blah, blah, blah. And then that's inside of the HTML. That's literally right there, that, those Russian nesting dolls. The smallest one and the larger one, the larger one, the largest one. So think about reading this from right to left. This is inside of this, and this, and this, and this. So because I've got that H2 selected, the code, the HTML code that controls it is listed here on the left, and then the CSS code that controls it is listed here. Okay, so list all of the code that we never created that comes built in with uh, jQuery Mobile. Literally, it tells you right here, jQuery Mobile 143.min.css. 
that CSS file that we've got uh, connected at the very top of the document, specifically line 3. That's what the 3 means. If you don't see exactly this, don't worry. Just look, what, look what's there. And it says on line 3, you've got something called dot .ui-overlay-a. Dash dash and then on the next line, maybe dot .ui-page-theme-a, dash dash comma, ui page theme a space UI panel wrapper. So there's all of this stuff behind the scenes uh, in jQuery mobile. And ultimately that results in something that I see here that says color 333, three, three, text shadow with some values. Well, I'm curious, what happens if I click on that and select a red color? Hmm. This element inspector will allow us to, uh, so after you change the color, uh, then press enter to get rid of that little box, uh, color picker. But uh, this element inspector, which is built into all of the web browsers, uh, many web designers use these uh, to figure out what needs to be changed either in HTML, but most of the time in CSS. This is not editing my original file. This is all temporary. If I were to, don't do this, but if I were to refresh my screen, whatever change I made goes away. This is like a sandbox. It allows me to try things, to make changes, see what works, add more padding, more margin, more border radius. I'm going the wrong direction. Re do the refresh, back to the way it was. Once I kind of figure out what I need to do, then I actually set it in stone by going back to Notepad and writing what I need to write there. So it's more of a, like I said, a can of worms, but uh, it'll make sense as we do it. Uh, let's try this. Uh, do you notice at the end of this line here is a magnifying glass? Click the magnifying glass. And then, oh, not that one, this one, sorry. Uh, the different browsers have different icons. But this one, this sort of like little arrow clicking at a box. Click on that one, pick an element, it says. Click that. And then hover your mouse over the design, and you'll see the different pieces sort of highlight up on the screen and then in the code. And let's say I want to figure out, well, if I wanted to change the color of the text up here, and I click on that, then it says, OK, that's online, whatever. And here's the CSS for it. So select that element picker again and just go around the, the document and maybe click on different pieces like that icon. You click on that and it show, something shows up here. This is the code. Some of it we wrote. Some of it is, is built in. And then here's the properties. And then I see on that, when I click that icon, I saw that that's inside of that, which is inside of that, which is inside of that. It's nested. Yes. So you're not able to change the element in the HTML. Just, just for the we on the left side here, no. Uh, we on the left side we cannot edit the HTML, but we can edit the CSS on the right side. Yeah, we can do a copy and paste. We're we're still kind of exploring this thing, and then we'll actually use it. But we're still looking at this brand new tool that we just discovered. Yes? So on the right hand side with the CSS, let's say you use the color picker and play with some different colors. If you find a color that you like, then you can see what the text number is mm -hmm. for describing that color. Yeah. And you can copy that back into your actual CSS file and use that color. Exactly. That's what's basically going to be our, our workflow. We're going to use the element inspector in Firefox to figure out what we need to change once we figured it out, then we actually we can copy and paste it, 
actually change it and save it in the notepad, in the CSS file. And sometimes it might be straightforward and sometimes not. Uh, so we still don't have all of the answers. We're still figuring this out. But notice again, if I click on the H2, it, it tells me here this is the stuff related to H2. You can click up the, the chain of command here. If you click on the next item, then it shows you this is the CSS that affects it on a, on a higher level. Because sometimes what, what I think affects, or what I think I need to edit, is not exactly what I need to edit. Sometimes I need to go back up the hierarchy and see, oh, okay, I see this is where I change the border so that I can have more border, or less border, or less margin. Or maybe I need to go back a little further than that, and I see, okay, this is where we've got padding 45 at the bottom. So watch this. You might not see the same thing, but just watch this. I've explored one part of the code, and I see something that says padding bottom 45 pixels. I can experiment with that too and say, uh, well, what happens if I put 145 pixels? Press Enter. In that case, nothing. But in other cases, it might have made a big old border down here. This is what I'm saying, that it's all interrelated. I can change color values, I can change pixel values. So just kind of playing around, what I did here was I made everything to the left because I changed the padding here. So the default value was 1m, and if I said maybe 0.5, things moved a little closer to the left. So we're going to look at what specifically we need to edit in a moment, but uh, this is a very useful and um, confusing panel, so it's good to have a guide first. Sometimes, so there's, there's basically two directions, I, I think, to kind of figure out what I need to do, uh, x and y. x over here. Sometimes I need to go toward the left over here to find the parent element, and then it's the first result here. Sometimes after going through this hierarchy, I don't find what I want, so I go back to the, to the final element, and then I go the y direction down here. There's more CSS here. This is in another direction. This is sort of the same thing about, well, this is inside of this, inside of that. This sort of applies the same sort of way. The highest element here is the most recent um, CSS code, uh, more specific, and sometimes I need to scroll down to find a more generic one that affects. So let's see what else I have. So notice it says, this is, was inherited from the div home the color, and if I scroll down, inherited from body, this is what's controlling body, font size, line height, font family. Look at that, I changed the font to my whole website. Again, we'll do this together, I'm just kind of um, showing you in general that that's what this tool is for, to find the right spot to edit. But there again, if you refresh, you're going to lose all that. that yeah, time. that's true. Okay. Refresh, and it goes back. Back. Now, I haven't explored it enough, but it seems that, um, okay, so we've, we were right now in the inspector, and there's other things to look at, like the debugger, but we've got this thing that's a style editor, and I haven't explored it enough. I think if we edit here, this might edit the original code, but I'm not going to try it yet. Um, I'm going to do it the, the way that I've done it before, and then we'll see how useful the style editor is, because it seems to be showing much more 
than I would like. Well, if I select that and change here, is that going to change my original? Save that. Yes, it does. All right, so uh, I'll, we'll get back to this in a moment. But um, so this inspector then is what we're going to use to figure things out to make some changes. We'll do it the long way first, and then we'll see about doing it an easier way. Uh, what I want to do is um, you, know, you can divide it up like this. This divider, you can stretch it out. You guys have larger monitors than me, so you might be able to fit more per screen. But here's what's going on. We have two options. This is um, this is saying if you want to change the color, let's say I want red there. Um, see all of the H2s change apparently. Okay, so if we wanted if we wanted to change that color, let's say we needed to, needed it to be red. I kind of found that if I change that, uh, okay, I get red. But how does that actually apply? What do I need to do? Uh, notice what this is saying. Um, it it's saying that there's a line of code in the jQuery mobile CSS file line three that is controlling this element. And this is complicated. We've been writing code, CSS code, where we're targeting one thing at a time, basically. We say anything that has a class of wide image gets affected like this. We just made the div center class, so we affect it like that. But we could technically say something like this. We could say div center, comma, dot all center. Don't do this, but I'm just showing you, comma, um, dot up center. What I'm saying is basically this text align center and this text align center and this text align center, which would be the same as if I had gone like this dot all center, curly braces, text align center, and then made another one dot up center. So I could have written all of these on separate lines. That is the basically the same as that. If I say something, comma, something, comma, something, all three of those are going to obey that. That saves me the, the effort of, of writing three things. If they're all doing the exact same thing, I can define them at once. That's what we're seeing in jQuery Mobile, right there. I stretch this out to make it so we can see it. UI dash overlay and UI page theme and UI page theme A space UI panel wrapper. Give it a text color of red. See that right there. And because this one is the one that is highlighted, it seems that this is the specific one actually that we would need to edit. So we have to be like uh, Sherlock Holmes for a bit and try to deduce this and figure out what do we need to edit um, and how. All these changes that I'm making here are not permanent. I want to make them permanent, so I'm going to write them in my CSS file. We could conceivably open the, um, the jQuery mobile file and go to line 3 and edit that, but it's better to leave alone the foundation and build on top of it. I usually never edit the original jQuery mobile files. They set the foundation and then I build upon the foundation with with my you know Kodika ext file. That's what it's there for. Question. Yes. Can you do like div dot div center? Div dot div center, uh-huh. What is it? I'm gonna have a big one with div center. Yeah, we could do something. Do you mean like this? You've got div 
center and then h1? No. What did you mean? It's literally div dot hit center. You can have a flat div center in many places. You can use div center in many places, yes. So, but this one typically is effective only in the div path. No, this this could be effective other places, like um, if I don't have a div, maybe I have a span, or maybe an h3. I could do uh, class equals div center. So this one is effective only in the div, div, not the s3. Who wants a more specific selection that uses the div tag? Is that what you mean? You want a more specific selector? Yeah. Uh, we just write another. We just write another selector. If you wanted to affect only the H three, then we could create dot H three center, and then whatever we want there. We can make up any any selectors of CSS to affect anything we want. I just named this one div center because I know I'm going to apply it to a div. But this could have been called anything like my center. That would work. I could apply it to anything. So if you're calling something h3 center, it doesn't mean that it only applies to h3. It's just that that's what I called it so I can tell perhaps what I used it for. Does, uh, does that make sense? Question? Yeah, I think uh, what he's asking is, do you want the div center only in div classes to be used? In this particular thing, I mean p, you can have a div center, I mean p more than some other thing. Uh, same name uh, because you may want to cascade. Well, you guys have to confirm with each other that is that what's being asked before no, I can that's answer. That's my question. Can, can you do that? Can you can you ask that one more time? Okay, so, so I have div center, right? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I call it center, dot center, class and dot center. Sure. And within division, div. Uh, I want certain characteristics, and within P, I want some other characteristic. And there is a center uh, where I specify a lot of attributes. Only a couple of them are different for P and U. Mm -hmm. Can you do that? Yeah. Um, the short answer is. Okay, I, I know that some of you are advanced, and then everyone else is be like, what are we even talking about here? So um, the short answer is most of these things, yes, you can do. Many ways to do it. And I think when there's more of an advanced question, I think it might behoove us a little bit more to talk one-on-one -on -one if someone has more of the advanced question, because then some of us, like, uh, that's you know the next level up but the short answer is most of these things you are able to do you are able to target specific things in specific divs we can get even more complicated with processors like sas and less that gets even more complicated and with variables and all of this great stuff so the short answer is you can usually do what you what you dream you just have to write the right code Um, so what we're trying to figure out here is we want to make uh, a change to this color here. So um, uh, I'm going to try it like this. I see that by uh, using the element inspector, I need a class of UI page theme A. Um, so we can probably do the copy and paste, but I'll do it the long way first. Let me see if I can get my screen to look good here. Yes. For my browser, because I'm using Explorer, it doesn't highlight that particular area. So how would I know if I were using uh, Firefox like you are? It has, it has a look in your tools screen, and there's something that says F11 tools, I believe. Use that, and that's the equivalent. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to refresh the web browser so it goes back to black. And then in my CSS, my CSS file, I'm going to write dot UI dash. Now I'm not making this up. I'm looking at what the, what the inspector told me. So it's UI dash page dash theme A.
and then color. All right, so it's kind of like, uh, in this case, it was like all of this sound and fury for one little thing. It was, okay, we needed to um, figure out what do we need to change, though, because it's all, uh, all of this. We never wrote UI page theme A anywhere. We never see it anywhere, really, in our, in our code. We would see it if we opened the jQuery mobile CSS file, however. We wouldn't know that until we use something like an element inspector to peel back the layers of the onion to find what we're looking for. Obviously, with someone that has some experience uh, to kind of guide us, it looks easy. But something like this, uh, with practice, does become, it makes more sense the more we use the element inspector. So we're sort of, um, we're making a, we, we're, we're not really making a class, we're defining it. The difference, we can't really tell what's the difference between that one and that one. It looks like we're both making them. We know that we've invented div center. We don't, we, it's not anywhere. It doesn't exist. UI theme, UI page theme comes from jQuery mobile. We can see that in the documentation. And here what we're doing is we are overriding the default behavior, which is listed right here in the element inspector, 333. The default behavior is 333, a sort of a gray a black. So we've said instead, no, let's change the color to pink. And so it becomes pink. The reason that happens is, up on our index page, at the very top, remember when we were looking at link, we've got style sheet on line 10, a link to the jQuery mobile, the basic jQuery mobile, the foundation, not basic, but the foundation of jQuery mobile, which says black text. And then later on, we said our own extra CSS comes next. That's part of the cascade. We define elements first, and what comes next can take over. And that's exactly what we've said here. This was defined on line 10, and then on line 12, we say, actually, let's make it look like this. And so then it changes. You want to save that CSS file and then run your index. And you should see that the welcome changes. And you go to the different pages and they all change because all, they all internally have that class built in. Yes? That, that seems like it could be a little risky because you're, you're changing pink everywhere jQuery Mobile uses the class of UI page theme A. And you don't really know everywhere it uses that. So no, that's true. You could turn some things pink. You have to expect them to turn things pink. Right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's part of the reason why we, we, we use the element inspector, so that whatever changes we make here are not permanent. Um, and then if uh, something came out unexpected, then it's time to figure out, OK, maybe we need to be more specific. Maybe actually the code uh, needs to be UI page theme A H3. You know, but that something is that is something we figure out as we peel back the layers of the onion with the element inspector. In this case, it seems to have worked as I was expecting. If it didn't, then I would continue to try to figure out well what else do I need to change? And we're gonna run into those issues that it's not just one little line of code, we might have to add some more. Especially when we deal with background colors and gradients and other more complicated things. But you could do the could you do the same thing by just declaring your own new class like dot pink and then everywhere in your in all your pages where you want the text to be pink, just use class equals dot pink. And then you'll know exactly what you're turning pink. You just have to manually do it every place you want it. Right? Yeah that should work. I'm gonna give that a try. I made the dot pink and then I know I want it right here. Welcome class equals pink, which might be a reserved word, actually, but we'll see what happens. Pink. And then it's not pink here because we never said class equals pink. So now I have to do that in two more screens, actually five more screens, 
because I've got also perhaps I use my H1 here or H3 or whatever. So that's a way to do it, but you see how inefficient that is. Mm -hmm. Question? Could you do it in reverse is what he's saying? Like maybe you want everything to be unique, except for one, you want to be black. Yeah. So could you start mm -hmm. override it with another class? Yeah, one way perhaps is like this. Have this one that affects everything, and then make a new one here called not pink. And apply it to the places that need to be black. All right, so um, good time for a break, I think. Uh, if you got your color to change, very good. If not, call me over. We'll see what happened. Let's take a 10-minute break. 7.15, we'll be back at 7.25. We'll do more of this stuff. Okay, thank you.